In this particular video, I want to explain basically the concept of flux and how changing flux can lead to an EMF. In essence, what I'm going to be talking about briefly is about Faraday's law. But first, let me start, start talking about flux. One of those things that students struggle to understand in terms of Faraday's law is the whole nature of flux. And one of the ways I try to describe flux in my classroom is to imagine rain falling. And the rain represents the magnetic field lines. And then I have a loop like this and I hold it up in the rain. And I then ask the question, how much water is going to go through my loop? Well, it's pretty clear that there are two factors that determine how much water will flow through my loop. First of all, how strong is the rain? How heavy is the rain? How big are the droplets and how closely are they spaced? And the second aspect of that is, of course, is how big is my loop? What's the area? And both contribute to how much rain it would capture through the space of my loop. The rain represents the magnetic field strength or the magnetic flux density. So the heavier rain represents a stronger magnetic field strength or a stronger mag magnetic flux density. And the area is obviously as well. So the magnetic flux is a measurement, really, of how much rain I capture or how many magnetic field lines I capture within my loop. And the two factors basically both contribute. The density of the lines and the area. And as a result, flux is a product of magnetic flux density and, mag and the area that is in there. Now, if I turn my loop in that particular angle there, then the area in terms of the, uh, the ability to capture rain, drops to zero. And so in this case, my flux is zero. If I were to hold it at a small angle, such as this, then the area from above is certainly larger than zero, but it's smaller than the maximum area that I have here. Again, the amount of rain I would capture, following my analogy, will be determined by the smaller area which is certainly a trigonomic ratio reduction of the maximum area that I already have. So that, in essence, is magnetic flux. So how does it then a, a changing flux determine the, the actual EMF that's generated? So if I were to start to start from this particular position, you could understand that if I were to rotate this around, then my flux would start at zero in this particular point. It would receive as a maximum, as the graph behind me demonstrates. And then as I continue around and move in a circle, then I would get a sinusoidal curve starting at zero, reaching to a maximum, and back to zero, and then a maximum in the negative direction. And as a result, that, in essence, is change is basically the value of the flux. But Faraday's law says actually the EMF is proportional to the rate of change of flux. So in this particular position, although the flux is actually at zero, the change of flux is actually at a maximum. There's a rapid change from zero flux to some sort of positive flux. And so at this particular position in the rotation, the change of flux is at a maximum. Whereas in this particular position, the change of flux is actually at a minimum. Even though the flux is actually large, the change of flux is actually very small. If I then continue on, of course, I get the same sign of sort of pattern. But as you can see, the actual sine curve or the curve is actually 90 degrees out of phase to the previous one, simply because the, um, the second curve is a derivative of the first curve. But finally, of course, Faraday said that the EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of flux. The negative is due to Lenz's law. And so the third graph shows that although here my flux is zero, my rate of change of flux is maximum. Because of Lenz's law, the EMF is in the negative direction at that particular point. As I move into this position, the EMF is obviously zero because the rate of change of flux is zero. And then back in this position, even though my actual uh, e uh, flux is zero, 
My rate of change of flux is a, a negative value, but my EMF is a negative value, and hence the third graph is there. I hope you understand, therefore, as I turn this, I am actually, as a result, producing an alternating current as the EMF changes every 180 degrees. I hope that makes sense. Thanks.